Hey guys, welcome to the Cloud Developer Channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how can you perform changes to your application, get it tested in Azure uh, without impacting your end users, and then quickly swap the, the changes that you're making from your testing environment over into production with uh, very little effort uh, and impact to your end users as well. So uh, what you see here is my uh, website that I've been developing, and you can see that it's the, the last version that I've been working on. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is I am going to go ahead and add another card here, another tile that represents my Azure playlist. So the first thing I'm going to show you real quick is what do you need to do in Azure in order to get that set up. So uh, when you open up your dashboard here, let's go ahead and find our application. And this is going to be the Cloud Developer I.O. app service. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And the first thing you'll notice here is we have all of our details about our application service itself. A couple of things to note. Um, the first thing is the Git URL that we're using to actually publish the source code. The other important thing to note is we're going to be using what's called a deployment slot. Now, in order to use this feature, you actually have to have a higher end uh, pricing tier or application tier, um, which is a paid instance or a paid version. And uh, you need either standard or premium edition. And you'll actually uh, see when you click on this that uh, it will tell you if you don't have one, you will not be able to actually add a slot. Now, in order to create this uh, tier and be able to assign your application to it in case you were using a free one, I'll show you how to do that real quick. So you do that by clicking this plus sign. And then since I've already selected it before, it shows up on the bottom as recently used, but you can just search for it, app service plan. And then when you select it, um, you can go ahead and click create and uh, give it the name. In this case, I just gave it uh, a different name uh, that represents the actual pricing tier as well as the region that I have it for. You uh, select a subscription and I also selected an existing resource group, which was my cloud developer IO resource group. And then selected Windows as the operating system, and I give it the location. In this case, I used uh, East US. And then once you do that, uh, this is where you actually select the different options from, from tiers perspective that uh, will give you access to the deployment slots. So in my particular case, I actually ended up going with this S1 standard, uh, which gives me 50 gigs of storage, one core, 1.75 gigabytes of RAM up to 10 instances with auto scaling, uh, daily backups, and five uh, deployment slots essentially, and global traffic uh, manager. So once you select this, uh, click select, uh, click create, and it will go ahead and create that uh, uh, app service plan for you. So since I already have one created, I'm not gonna go ahead and do that here. So I'll go back to my all resources, click on my application. So uh, once you actually get that application uh, service plan set up, you're going to want to switch your application or make sure that application is using this uh, app service plan. And the way you can do that is by scrolling down and there's a section called app service plan. You can click on change app service plan and you'll have that option available here. Since I am actually running on the uh, standard plan that I need right now, um, it doesn't show up anymore, uh, but before when it did, I just clicked it and it essentially switched it over to that plan. So once you complete that step, the next step we wanna do is we're gonna wanna actually create a deployment slot. So it is as simple as just clicking deployment slots. I'll click add slot, and in this case, I'll give it a name of stage. And then uh, from a configuration source perspective, I'll just clone the configuration that I already have, which is Cloud Developer IO. This uh, came with the uh, default uh, application um, service itself that got created. I'll go ahead and click OK. And now it's going to run through the steps it needs in order to actually create that deployment slot. So um, as you can see, it's actually done. It's a fairly quick process, and it shows up right here. Now. If I go ahead and click on this, what you'll notice is that it actually opens up and looks exactly the same way that my uh, my basic website showed up when I initially created that. And I can even go ahead and click Browse button, and you'll notice that it gives you this blank uh, web application just like it did the first time. So I'll go ahead and close that. Um, and you, you also notice that the URL is actually different. So in this case, it's Cloud Developer IO dash stage. So it adds um, a suffix at the end of your URL 
uh, that you used before as the URL for uh, for this new um, deployment slot. So the other thing that we're going to want to do is uh, once you're actually in this uh, stage deployment slot, uh, we want to actually also hook it up uh, or configure it to have the deployment option set up to use Git. So just like we did before, we chose a uh, configuration required setting for the uh, the source of where it's going to be pulling the actual code from. And we're going to go ahead and choose local Git repository and hit OK. And what this does is actually hooks it up to the uh, Git uh, repository, it sets one up specifically for this deployment slot, just like you did for our other uh, main application itself. You'll notice though that the URL is also reflecting the fact this is uh, Cloud Developer IO dash stage, specifically to represent this particular uh, deployment slot. So now we're ready to actually start using this. Now, um, the next step I'm going to go ahead and do is actually go ahead and make the code change and uh, go ahead and associate that code change uh, with that new source control repository. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is actually open up my application content component. And in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to locate the place where I want to put that additional card. And what I want to do is I want to actually put it right after the Angular uh, badge or uh, card that I have here. So let's go ahead and find where that's at. And we can see it's right here. So I'm going to go ahead and actually copy and paste uh, the Visual Studio card. And um, there we have it. So the other thing that I, I want to do is actually I have an image for this. So I'll go ahead and actually put this image in this folder, in the images folder. And so I'm going to go ahead and use this image right here. Okay, so um, let's see. So this is Visual Studio and videos related to Azure. Tutorials, and I'll go ahead and actually change this to also say Azure, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, change my logo uh, to actually reflect that uh, the new image that I put up. So the other thing I need to do is actually go ahead and find the the link uh, to my uh, playlist as well. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. I'll go to my YouTube channel, and I'll just right click, copy it and go ahead and update the URLs here. Okay, so as soon as I did that, I should be able to actually uh, refresh. And actually, you can see that it showed up right here. So now my application is actually ready uh, to be packaged up and deployed to this uh, deployment slot. So um, let's actually go back to um, to our Azure portal real quick. And I, I just want to make sure you see this as well. So when I click on my main Cloud Developer IO page and I click Browse, you'll see that I'm going to be taken to that website. And once it actually loads, I should be able to see the content without um, without that change that was made. So as you can see, if I, and I, I can reload this real quick, you can see that there's nothing show up here. And then when I actually go ahead and uh, go to the deployment slots, and I'll switch over to that other deployment slot, I'll click Browse here, and you'll see that uh, nothing shows up here. So let's go ahead and uh, now take the change that I have here, and I'm going to go ahead and create a new uh, new bundle for deployment. And the way I'll do that is by actually, let me make a quick tweak here. And I'm going to go ahead and run a command that's ng build prod. And what this is going to do is actually, it's going to go ahead and create the, the production bundle, minified and compressed. So once this completes, we'll go ahead and copy over the files uh, to our uh, repository that is linked to the Azure website. 
and we'll go ahead and uh, show you how to configure and link this uh, this second deployment slot um, to that Git repository as well. Okay, so um, the actual deployment is done. Um, in, not deployment, the actual packaging is done. So what you can see here is if I open up this index page, uh, you'll notice that uh, I have my content here as well now. So I can go ahead and close that. And uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is actually copy this. And I have a different folder called Azure Cloud Developer. And I'll go ahead and delete everything but the Git folder. And then I'll just paste the content, uh, the new content here. And now what I want to do is I want to actually go ahead and uh, commit the changes to this Git repository and uh, get it ready and connected to the second slot that I have. So uh, the first thing is I'm going to go ahead and do git add. And then I'm going to go ahead and do git commit. Okay, so it committed that change. Now, the next step is I need to actually push these changes out to the deployment slot. Um, so the way to do that is I need to actually add what's called a remote branch. So uh, the first thing I'm going to show you is how do you actually check to see if uh, you have a particular branch configured. So when you do git remote dash v, it will show you the different branches that are available. So in this particular case, I only have one origin branch um or destination i guess uh, and fetch and push is enabled for that now i need to add a the actual stage one so let's go ahead and uh, go back to the actual dashboard in azure and i'm going to go ahead and copy this uh this git clone url here and go ahead and go back here into the powershell window and i'm going to go ahead and run a command to add that remote branch so you do it by uh, typing in git remote add I'll give it um, the name of Azure Stage, and I'll paste that URL here. So press Enter. And now if I run that git remote v command, you'll see that the Azure Stage uh, configuration has been added um, to know this is the, another destination that I can push from this particular branch. So now that this is actually completed, what I can go ahead and do is I'll run git push Azure Stage master which is the actual branch. Um, Azure Stage is the actual the name that you use for that particular location or destination where you want to push to. So I'll go ahead and uh, press Enter, and it's going to ask you for the publishing credentials that you've configured before. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, go ahead and watch the other video uh, that I, I recorded last time. And I'll give it the, the actual password and uh, press Enter, and it will begin the actual deployment process. So if I go back to Azure here um, and I click on the deployment options and I'm still in the, the stage deployment slot, you can actually see that it's uh, receiving the changes as we speak. So from a command line perspective, it's actually already done, uh, but in here uh, it's going to take a few seconds to actually show up correctly. So in this case, it's completed the activity, and let's go ahead and uh, take a look. So if I, again, go back to my original application, if I refresh this, you'll see that it's still the, the old version. Now, this is the uh, stage um, deployment slot with a different uh, DNS name, and if I go ahead and refresh it now, I should see my new website show up. So, and you can see that the new content actually showed up, and the new card showed up as well. Now, how do you actually use this and, uh, you know, what's the benefit of doing something like that? Now, let's say you want to actually release a minor change or a change to your application that doesn't, uh, you know, for example, it's a change to your UI and you want to make some minor tweaks, you want to actually validate it before you make it live and available to end users, you can go ahead and use this concept of deployment slots, get everything validated, uh, and when you're actually ready, you can go ahead and actually publish those changes um, or essentially what they call swap, which um, will make your staging slot, the actual production slot, and your production slot, your staging slot. This way you can actually start uh, you know, making changes. Uh, and in case you need to actually roll anything back, you can just uh, swap them back uh, without actually having to go through any extra steps of rolling back and uh, restoring from backup or anything like that. 
So let's go ahead and run through that exercise real quick. So I'll go back to the Azure portal and um, you can either go back to your uh, application service and click here uh, on the main application service itself and you'll notice that there's a swap button here or you can click on the deployment slots and you can click the, the swap button right there. So I'll go ahead and do it from the overview and when I click swap it gives you uh, a new blade uh, in Azure portal and essentially what we're doing is we're saying we want um, to actually swap uh, production and staging so essentially we're going to make our staging the production uh, deployment slot so i'll go ahead and click ok here and uh, it started the process now this can take a, a few uh, moments uh, you know typically it took me less than uh, 30 seconds so uh, depending on the size of your application and different things that it needs to do uh, it might take a little bit longer or faster so, uh, but let's go back to our uh, website real quick as it's actually doing the deployment. Um, let's go ahead and actually refresh the page and see what it does. So even though it's actually still deploying, you can already see the results of that. Uh, my Cloud Developer IO Azure website already has the content. And then if I go to the staging slot, and I'll refresh this, you'll actually see that it's gone. So, and the reason for that is because it actually swapped the, the two instances one to another. So in the case you actually discover a bug or an issue, you can always go back and click swap again and actually uh, roll the change back very easily and uh, with very little effort uh, So and end user impact, So I sh which I think is really beneficial. Now, if I wanted to actually go ahead and, and make sure that um, everything is synced up, I can go ahead and actually perform the same git uh, push command again from uh, the same folder with the same exact command it will prompt me again for credentials and if i do it this time however it's actually going to go ahead and push the changes um to the production slot because uh, if, uh, if you actually notice here um let me actually open this up again um so right now our staging slot actually is using the url of the cloud developer io now the actual deployment slot that shows up uh, here um, is actually the basically since it swapped it if I actually upload the changes to this uh, git URL again it will actually overwrite the other website and all the content which will actually make it the same so when you have the next available version of your code that you want to start deploying you want to make sure they're probably in sync uh, or at the same starting point because you're not planning to roll back and then you can go ahead and um, you know deploy the new version of your application on top of uh, that deployment slot and then swap it again uh, to make your uh, new version of the application go live so um, if you have any questions go ahead and go ahead and leave your feedback in the comments uh, section below um, hopefully you enjoyed this video and I will talk to you later